The thought about playing for a professional hockey team, especially at the level like the NHL, is always a dream for many of us fans. We all follow our teams and cheer them on. However, sometimes people do not realize the pressure for hockey players, even fringe players, will be criticized no matter what they do. The reality is, people will not understand that hockey is just like a job to some that play. It can be good for those who genuinely love the game. But other times, some will play for the financial stability. The pressure can build up and can be time consuming to their lives where playing 24-7 begins to resent their love and passion for the sport. We'll go over a few notable players throughout NHL history who made the NHL but in one way or another began to not enjoy playing in a league. The reasons can vary from social pressures from the media or because they were never truly passionate about the game. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's talk about Jim Carrey, the net detective. He was a hockey goaltender who played in the NHL in the mid to late 90s, but when people talk about his NHL career, he is often put into a category of players who began their career at a high level but saw substantial regression after the following years. As he began as a finalist for both the Carter Trophy as Rookie of the Year and a Vezina finalist as the best goalie, his second season would see him reach the peak of his career as he would play in 71 games, winning 35 and leading goalies with 9 shutouts. That year would also see him win the Vesna Trophy. However, that will be the last time we'll see Jim Carrey at his best as his third year would see him struggle immensely. Even being traded to the Boston Bruins, in hopes of a comeback, the Bruins would attempt to resurrect his career but after injuries plaguing his career, he would retire from the game. In a span of 5 seasons, Jim Carrey would go from becoming one of the best goalies in the 90s all the way to leaving the league. But why? Many of his former teammates would point out that his love for the game wasn't quite on par to others. Keith Jones, a teammate of his, once mentioned that, I don't know that he really loved the game. I hate to pin somebody with that label, but I remember thinking to myself back then, I wonder how much he really likes it. Goaltender Olaf Kozik commented, I don't think becoming an NHL player was something he looked at long term. It was more of a way to make a good salary. I wouldn't say he lived and died the game. And that alone tells a complete different perspective into what may have gone wrong. Being a professional athlete is time consuming and takes full dedication to the game if you want to thrive in a league. And unfortunately, it wasn't something Jim Carrey wanted to do long term as he would leave his hockey life behind him. It was rumored he took his entire signing bonus to put it into various real estate investments and when the investments turned into millions, he stopped caring about hockey. As of today, he is the CEO of a medical billing company in Florida and Massachusetts. When it comes to talking about players with high expectations and failed in the league, Alexander Daig is a name that will pop up. Selected first overall in the 1993 draft, he was one of the most anticipated players in the history of the game and was touted as the next French-Canadian superstar. At the age of just 17 years old, he would produce a whopping 137 points in 53 games in the QMJHL, putting him at a pace of 180 points which could have ranked him amongst the top 25 all time. I won't go over his career in detail as his story has been told many times but just know he is also a player that was one of the worst first overall picks in NHL history. But a few things to note was that Dig became the highest paid rookie at the time of his NHL contract, signing a $12.25 million deal for 5 years. This deal single handedly would cause the NHL to create a rule for rookie contracts in the NHL to have league minimum deals. Overall, his career totals were very underwhelming, never producing more than 51 points in a season. The downfall really began before he even made the NHL. Dag admitted he had no desire to play the game to begin with. In an interview on Radio Canada, he said he never wanted to play hockey, but stuck to the game because of his talent. Instead, he became interested in the entertainment business and took a status as an opportunity to become a celebrity. This puts into context why his attitude was the way it was, with his most infamous quote, I'm glad I got drafted first because no one remembers number 2. As of today, he can be seen frequently in movie studios in Montreal and in Hollywood. 
He also participates in hockey celebrity events from time to time to help promote his image. Next, we'll take a look back in the past at one of the most talented puck handlers in the 1980s, Kent Nilsson. For those wondering who he was, he was known as the Magic Man before Pavel Datsuk, as his abilities with the puck was at another level compared to many hockey players back in the day. He was among the most skilled players of his generation and was the pioneer of a popular go that is called the Forsberg, originally known as the Nilsson Feint. When you take a look back at his career totals, you will see that he is amongst the top 10 in points per game leaders in NHL history, an impressive 686 points in 553 regular season games, even winning a Stanley Cup at the end of his first stint in the NHL. But looking at his NHL career, you will also see that with so little games played, why did he not stay longer in the league? Well, despite being the heart of the team's offense, Nilsson was frequently accused of lacking passion and intensity. He often shied away and was hardly physical, never wanting to go to the boards or battle for the pucks. Many Flames fans questioned his desire to win, and in the Canadian market, there will be massive backlash if your superstar isn't performing at a high level. On paper, his stats look great, but when coaches and fans watched him play, they were disappointed as they truly believed he had much more potential in his game. After just 8 years in the NHL, he would take off to play in Europe at the age of 30 years old. While in Bern, Switzerland in 1990, a couple of reporters who criticized Nielsen during his time in the NHL came to visit him at a local rink. After shaking hands, he would remark, 5 years of hell you gave me in the papers, why should I talk to you now? With that much media pressure on him every single year, I can see why he would end up leaving so early in his career. All he wanted to do was to play hockey at his pace, but with the media being shoved in his face, that resentment to play in the NHL would build up. If you're curious, I also made another video on a different topic about Nilsson as you can check it out at the end of this video. Slater Kukuk is on this list for different reasons. I briefly talked about him in my 2012 first round draft video but I didn't go into details about why he had a short career. For those who didn't know, Kukuk was a player drafted 10th overall in the infamous 2012 draft by the Tampa Bay Lightning. He spent many parts of 8 seasons in the NHL and last season, he announced that he'll be taking a step back from the NHL due to suffering an anxiety based eating disorder called anorexia, a condition that was inherited from his dad. The criticisms of not playing in the NHL often can add to the pressure and anxiety because you are expected to perform at your best. With expectations of being a high draft pick meant you should be a good player. Adding onto the train of social media and the fans criticisms just made things worse for him. He would mention in a post, I left the game because my life inside of it had gotten to a place that was unbearable and unhealthy towards my mental health. I would say I played a majority of my professional games without the ability to eat much, if anything, the night before and the day of games. Though never mentioning that he did not enjoy playing, I can see this as an example if not dealt with, it could have ruined his love for hockey. Fortunately, he was able to recognize it before it escalated to another level. It was good for him to take a step back from hockey to focus on his mental health. I only have best wishes for Kukuk and for his family. Thank you to everyone who's made it this far. If you are curious about the last two topics mentioned in the video, you can click here and check them out. If you like what you saw, I hope you can hit the like button and to subscribe to watch more hockey content in the future. We are on the road to 1k, so it would mean a lot if you plan to stick around. I hope to see you again.